I wish I knew what I'm about to tell you years ago. With over 20 years of lifting under my belt, I've gone down a lot of rabbit holes trying to build and maintain muscle and strength. From baseball, soccer, and golf, to bodybuilding and CrossFit, I've gone down tons of rabbit holes in fitness. But if you wanna build and keep muscle, you can do so a lot faster and easier by avoiding some of the mistakes that I've made along the way. So here you go. Three things I wish I knew earlier to help me build and maintain muscle. Number one, avoid shiny object syndrome. When I was coming up in sports and fitness, I wanted to do it all. I wanted to get abs, I wanted to be great at soccer, I wanted to learn Olympic lifting, have a huge bench press, lots more. But that led to a lot of slow progress in too many areas at once, where I would have gone further faster if I had just focused on one thing at a time. See, fitness is lifelong, so instead of trying to mash different pieces of programs together, stick to one thing for even just a few weeks at a time and give it a chance to gel. One way that I love to do this now is to stay with a six week training cycle in one of my tracks of the Persist program before I switch to something else. So for example, I was really loving the pump track to build muscle this past summer. And now I'm moving my focus into some Olympic lifting and feeling a bit more athletic. So I'm sticking with the perform track. With the way these programs are built, I can focus on building up one key area of my fitness more than the other areas while not giving up anything in the areas that are taking a slight backseat. Here's my training app. I've got a snatch complex today that I'll revisit on the same training day next week with a slight change to the position of the lift. In the first week, I'm doing snatch liftoffs, segment power snatches, and hang power snatches on the minute. In the second week, I'm doing snatch pulls, slow pull power snatches, and another hang power snatch, only this time below the knee, every minute on the minute. At the end of the six week training block, I can either keep going with perform to develop my Olympic lifts even further, or maybe I'll switch over to the pillars track for shorter, fewer workouts per week if I have a little less time to train and I wanna dial things back. Number two, train hard enough, but not to the point of breakdown. One of the hardest things to learn in strength training is the right amount of effort. Too little and you're wasting your time. Too much and you risk injury or not being able to recover very well. Personally, I was somebody who definitely always wanted to push it maximally each and every day. I felt like if I didn't go all out, then I was falling behind what my potential could be. But maxing it out too often just meant that I couldn't recover fast enough on many occasions and I was in a constant state of overtraining. Learning that sweet spot took time, and I could have sped the process up a lot more if I had followed rate of perceived exertion more closely, instead of going ham every single time I picked up a weight. In training, the best progress comes when you get close to failure without going beyond the point where your form starts to break down. With the rate of perceived exertion scale, you can begin to gauge where your optimal level of effort is to achieve great results and not burn out. The way I think about it is, if I'm at a nine out of 10 on the RPE scale, that means I could have squeezed out maybe one more rep before failing or grinding out something that looked ugly with bad form. If I'm at an eight out of 10, that means I could have done that for two more reps before my failure of form started to kick in. As a coach, the best way I've seen to put this into practice for my athletes is to now give a rep range and a set range, and then some guidance on how the lift should feel. That way, no matter how you're feeling on a given day, you can push to a high level of effort for you. No need to grind through crappy form in order to get that last rep just because the workout says you have to get 10 you can still get enough effort to build muscle as long as you're hitting that rep range and you're working to the right RPE on any given day. So here's what it looks like in my program today. I've got split squats and pull-ups in an on the minute format, which builds in rest between sets, but keeps my training session running on time. I can even switch my level in the training app to scaling options if I don't have weighted pull-ups yet or I'm not feeling up to it today. What I'll do on each of these sets is I'm going to follow the RPE notes that are in the program, which will guide me in this strength progression week by week. There's also going to be an intention and progression note for many of our strength lifts. 
In this example, the intention and progression note states that for five straight weeks, we're going to see the same strength intensity movements with the same reps and the same sets. So it will be extremely important to follow the RPE suggestions that I've listed and we'll get them harder and harder and harder as the weeks progress. The third lesson that I have for you today is eat the right amount. One of the biggest mistakes I made was restricting my calories into a severe deficit while trying to build lean muscle. Now, if you have extra body fat to lose, a caloric deficit will be part of the process, but you shouldn't remain in one forever. At some point, building muscle and strength is going to require adequate food. If you want to arrive at the right amount of food for your needs, don't rely entirely on macro calculators and especially don't rely on how many calories your Apple Watch says that you're burning. Instead, I'm gonna suggest a two-part process. First, get a free MyFitnessPal account and track everything that you eat for two weeks. And I mean everything. Also, weigh yourself and take a few photos of your body at different angles at the beginning and the end of these two weeks. Now, I don't want you to intentionally make changes to what you normally do from a food perspective during these two weeks. Same thing with your training. Just stick to what you do normally. Though it's inevitable that we will tend to eat a little less when we track what we're doing. This is just human psychology. What we're actually aiming for is trying to get a good baseline for what your normal approach to eating and movement and daily life actually looks like. At the end of these two weeks, ask yourself, what happened? Did you gain weight? Did you lose any or did you stay the same? This is gonna tell you whether you're currently eating too much and in a surplus of calories. It's gonna tell you if you're eating too little, if you're in a deficit of calories, or if your body weight stays the same, that means you're eating in maintenance. Your next step to this two-part process is to hit up my free macro calculator at the link in the description below. After you've input some of your data, does it match up with your daily averages from the two-week test that you did on yourself? If not, you may have overestimated your daily activity level. The goal you select also determines whether the calculator is gonna give you maintenance level or a deficit or a surplus. Now, the comparison between what your average intake is now and what your calculator suggests based upon your goal is gonna allow you to set some realistic targets if you want to make a change. For example, if you wanna build a lot of muscle mass, you're going to need to eat more food. Now I know that I eat 3,700 calories a day on average, but I might need to do a 20% increase of calories if I wanna pack on a lot of muscle. Now what that could equate to is a bump up to 4,500 calories, another 800 calories. Realistically for me, and maybe for you, that might feel like a heck of a lot of food to try and eat every single day to start adding muscle. So we make a realistic change. I might start with 4,000 calories a day for a few weeks, instead of the 4,500 and then see how it feels, see how it's working and then come back and reassess. Now, if macro counting is just too much to think about right now, I've got an even easier suggestion. Take your target body weight and eat that number in grams of protein each day. Protein makes a huge impact and it's one thing to really pay attention to when you wanna put on some muscle. If you're in my Persist program, head to the nutrition library to grab the bonus practical protein ebook and you're going to find protein prep tips recipes and all the ways that i've uncovered the hard way to make it easier for you to hit your protein goals on a regular basis and make it part of every single day all right now it's your turn do you want to put on muscle and feel like you're getting stronger and more athletic week by week my persist program is kicking off a new year of training and we've mapped out a full range of lifts and skills to develop to keep the program fun and fresh while making sure you stay hooked on that feeling of progress so go ahead try persist for free for two weeks with the link in the description below take care